The Light Superstock class is a study of contrast. Many manufacturers are represented in a cavalcade of colors, and the variety even extends to the fuel. If you see black smoke, then it's a diesel burner, while white smoke indicates alcohol fuel. It's a dazzling display on dirt, and it's coming to you next. In the heart of the Midwest, there's a band of modern day marauders. Mounted atop their beasts, they line up to throw down. They are outlaws. The sun is setting over Rock Valley, Iowa, and day one of the Thunder in the Valley Outlaws pulling event. Hello everyone, I'm Claude Wood, Dave Bennett, Rick Carlson and I will be bringing you all the action in the light superstock class. Dave, as always, the key to success on the track comes down to the sled. Oh yeah, the moving of the weight going forward moves the weight off the rear tires of the sled onto the skid pan itself, making it so heavy that the pulling tractor just cannot go any farther. And today's show is going to specify the light superstock class, the only class the Outlaws has got where the alcohol and the diesel can mix it up together. In the 6,100 to 6,400 pounds, a lot of color, a lot of action. Our first puller coming up will be Gary Rimmers. He's out of Holmesville, Nebraska, and he calls it the Hustler. Well, when you talk about color in this class, I mean, you got a case tractor that's supposed to be white, but we painted it black, but quite a tractor to start with. You don't see many cases still on the pulling track, and eh, this didn't work out too good for Gary, the man out of Holmesville, Nebraska. Now, he's the first puller of the class, and that means he will be able to turn that pull down and come back later, and I'm sure that's what he's going to do. As we look at the replay, well, way up in the air, too early and too high, and that's where it really started to go wrong. Well, when that front end come down, the tires got a hold, and that pulled his motor down. Good look at Barn Buddy. This is Chuck Schluter getting ready to go. Your six-time winner on the Outlaw circuit for last year. Well, that shot of that little aluminum handle, that is the gun and rod. That is the throttle, and he was all the way down pretty early on it. A little bit of bounce right there, but look at front end up in the air. Beautiful, beautiful pass, spinning grand. He will like it, 323-43. He puts a lead on the track that will be hard to shoot at. Take a look at it again, Dave. When the wheels come up, are you okay as long as you don't have to hit the brakes? Well, as long as you don't hit the brakes and they don't go too high, and he's borderline being too high. He was very aggressive on the clutch at the starting line, very aggressive, but it's gonna work out for him. Let's go down to Rick Carlson and see what Chuck has to say. Chuck, it hopped, it bounced. I think he ran all four up in the air and then 323. I guess that's a keeper. Well, it wasn't a perfect pass, that's for sure. But uh, I don't like that crow hopping like it does, but uh, she stayed in there. We'll take it. It's the best we can do tonight. So hope it'll hold up. And that'll bring up Alan Ulmer driving Midnight Mistress. He owns a high performance snowmobile shop. And Dave, he's been working on this tractor about three years. Hey, bought the tractor and started making changes on it, and it's fought him. It's worked decent. It's not worked decent, but this year he's coming to him pretty good. And just like right here, he is going to be happy about this. Slides it all the way down to 348 and 69. He just took the lead away from that John Deere. Chuck was feeling good until this red one come along. Spot the sled over on the left, and he too wheels straight up and pulls over to the center just a little bit, but whoa, back to the left. Yeah, the little light supers, take a look right inside that front grill right there. You can see those two turbos. That's where the power is coming from. This guy is going to be happy. You notice right hand on the throttle, slowly bringing that forward. The foot working the clutch, but that left hand is really busy fighting the steering wheel all the way down the track. Yeah, and that's just this day because the front wheels are off the ground. Fist in air, he knows he went to the lead. Alan, it slipped, it slid, had the front end up, and you almost drove it over to us. A little left, a little right. Uh, we made it down the end, though. We'll uh, see how it holds up. We've got a lot of tough tractors going behind us yet. 348 feet's a pretty good number. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you it felt good. Yeah, I guess so. That'll bring up a midlife crisis. This is John Ewalt. Yeah, out of Shelton, Nebraska, the midlife crisis looks a whole lot like the last one you seen go down the track, but notice this one's blowing smoke. The other one was alcohol, this one is diesel. 
The two fuels mixed together in this class only, and things went south for this man. 280 and 59, that'll put him in third place, but he knows that ain't gonna be a good run. A little bit uh, different arrangement on the weights here, Dave. Only two right in the center. Well, with these little fly weights, that's probably all that he's got. He's probably got every weight that he can have up front. Tires are spinning. Motor kind of went south on him just a little bit. A good look right here at Scott Whitworth. He drives the AgriLogic White. Uh, you got to love this class. You get all the different brands, and it's the white tractor sponsored by AgriLogic. This is an alcohol burner. You don't see any smoke coming out of the exhaust. See a lot of tire speed. See some high RPM. And you see a distance of 325.21. That'll put him into second place. Well, you mentioned alcohol and some others had diesels. Any, any preference one way or the other? Well, you get a little more weight to add to your tractor if you run the diesel, but alcohol has got the ponies. Look at those rear tire squat. He is putting some power to the ground. What happened? I mean, you were up, then we saw everybody scrambling after the pull. Oh, we got pushed some alcohol out in the front around the turbochargers. It caught on fire at the end. We was a, a little too rich and then too high a gear, too proud a gear. We'll remedy that for tomorrow. And I don't know about too proud of gear, but when he said rich, he's just talking about too much alcohol. It belched out of those turbos, caught on fire, no bad deal. From West Point, Nebraska, that'll bring up Keith Backer. He calls it last call. International, here again, another little brand. Cute looking tractor, nice looking tractor. You hear that motor going up and down every time that front end goes up and down. That is the death of any pulling rig is when it goes up and down like that. You're costing yourself distance every time. He goes 287 and 45. You think the track is changing a little or they just haven't really figured it out yet? Well, these flyweights, when you're working with 6,000 pounds with two to 3,000 horsepower, you, you just gotta rely on your own instinct of where to put the weights. I don't think it's the track, I think it's the weight. Checking out the leaderboard, Alan Ulmer, his patience really paying off. First, second, and third is red, white, and green leading the class. A lot of color in the white super stocks. Orange is coming up next, the D21, driven by Brian Groney. When we come back. The Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association is brought to you by Bauer Built. Our strength is in our people and the customers we serve. Will Cross Seed. Good product, good prices, good service. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Thunder in the Valley from Rock Valley, Iowa. Great crowd as usual on hand here today, enjoying all the action. Our next puller will be Brian Groney. We mentioned earlier he drives the D21 Alice from the factory 10,000 pounds, but David doesn't weigh that now. No, nope, he's in there at 6,400 pounds. Got a lot of weight trimming on this. Proud to see the D21s back on the track. Look at that fire coming out of the stack. He is burning plenty lean on that. Needed more water to go in the motor to put that fire out. 259 and 28. What are we talking about horsepower here? Anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 horsepower all over the board in this class with the diesel and alcohol. Look at that flame coming out of the stack. When you see that kind of a flame in a diesel, you're about to burn a hole in the piston. And that smoke coming out of the bottom end, I ain't too sure he didn't get one. Looking at Gary Rimmers, he drives a Case tractor, a little unusual. We wondered why he chose Case. My dad started out with Cases, and I just kept on the tradition. How has the season gone for you so far? Really good, I'm happy, you know. I mean, this is the best of the best, you know, so we've been running in top three. And a couple of runner-ups in there, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had three seconds. And uh, I had some bad luck last week at David City. We took a couple pistons, but we got her all fixed up again, so hopefully we'll be back in there. Well, Gary's been working on it. He turned down his first pull. Dave, we'll see if he was successful with the wrenches. Well, that first puller option, give him a, no, it didn't give him much of a chance. He does have a problem, most definitely has a problem. 
71 feet. You know in that first pull, he only went 180 something. Watch him come off the line, the smoke's good. And all of a sudden the smoke goes away, goes to white. Yep. He has got a problem inside that motor. Gary, I guess what I'll just ask is, what happened? <laughs> I must have took a couple pissing or something. Evidently I got piston problems or something. It just doesn't want to hang in there, so. Better luck next time, I guess. Making the trip from Howells, Nebraska. This is Frank Boha Boy. He calls his tractor Green Lightning. Green Lightning is the machine. John Deere is green and giddy up go. This guy can ride it hard and heavy. Alcohol burner. Walking the dog a little bit. When you see that, things is gonna happen. Backing the flagman up and he takes it all the way down. Goes to second place at 347 and 53. Misses it by one foot. I love this shot right here, Claude. I love this shot. Well, he spotted it just about in the center. It's wheels up pretty soon, but boy, did he work that. Uh, he was almost in danger right there. If him tires had turned loose and that front end come down when he had the tires turned to the right, he would have not went where he wanted to go. Now, we're going to take a ride down the track. Frank Boha, boy, green lightning now. He took the front end out from under it a week ago on a rough ride, but when he goes to walking like that and the front end's up in there, you got to love it. Frank, it's all in one piece. Yeah, the front end's still together and we're happy. We, we, it's a good run. <laughs> yeah, it's a great run. Looking at the leaderboard, Ulmer, Boha Boy, and Whitworth. Their hard work working on their tractors paid off today, but lots more competition coming up. Now, if you're at Thunder in the Valley, you just gotta go home with a souvenir t-shirt. Lot to choose from. Stay with us. Welcome back to Thunder in the Valley. One thing you gotta love is the imagination put into all of the names that go on to the track. And the crowd enjoying the tractors and all of the action here at Thunder Valley. Back to light super stock pulling action and that'll bring up Jim Scheffler. He's out of Hancock, Iowa. Calls the tractor too much fun. Spin and grin, works the system a little bit differently. Don't have quite the tire speed as some of the other boys do, but he's always having fun. He don't have too much fun. He has a lot of fun pulling. Not going to happen too good for him here today. 2.30 and 18. Just didn't spin and grin like he should. As we look at it again, it looks like his overall speed is down. Am I imagining that? No, he didn't have the tire speed the other tractors. Plus, when he come off the line right there, he done a pretty good zig and a zag. Got him. You can see the tracks right there. Just not a good run for too much fun. Well, this is Rod Pesota. He calls his tractor Crazy Horse. And thinking back on those names, is there a reason he might call it that? That is the perfect name for this tractor. This guy can get wild and crazy. <laughs> you better look out. You better look out. Yeah. Left tire going left, right tire going right. We have a problem called Midas Muffer. That is about as high up in the air, I think, that we have seen today. Well, the high up is bad enough. The fact that it started dog walking side to side and slamming around, breaking that front end. Those front skis on the front end saved that tractor. Now let's get on the sled. Look at this run from the back side. Basically, watch his head. When he goes to hit and side to side right there, he knew he was in trouble. The roll cage kept him in place. Let's go down to Rick Carlson and see what he says. Rod, we can kind of see what happened. Tell us what you saw from up there. Well, it got a little wild. Things are going left and right, and I thought it'd settle down, but it didn't. Well, it looks like an axle and maybe a wheel or tire. Hey, I think we can fix it. Lower the drawbar tomorrow. And tomorrow is another day. This is Lyle Ronk getting ready to pull. Earlier, Rick Carlson caught up with him. It's a green tractor. Demon be gone. Lyle Ronk, how did you start pulling? Well, when I started pulling, when I was about eight or nine years old, my dad decided it was a good idea to get the garden tractor out, take it to the county fair in town, and we started pulling in, and I guess it just kind of evolved from there. Why the name Demon be gone? Because it seems like we're always fighting a demon, and we want it gone. Have you had it much this year? 
uh, a bunch of little things, self-inflicted wounds, you could call them, and we finally got all of them gone last night, I think. We're all, we're set to go for a while anyway until it decides to show its ugly head again, but it's running, it's running pretty good for a change. Well, the Demon Begones had a lot of wins over the past two or three years, so Dave, he hopes those demons are out of here. Little different paint scheme on the Demon Be Gone this year. And you notice those lights up front. When you're taking video of this, you can tell when the water comes on. When the switch kicks on, it turns the light green. That's more for his purpose to know when the water goes into the motor. Oh, nice, nice. Front end up in the air, going to take him right on down the track. Goes to number three at 341 and 83. Well, we've seen this with a lot of previous pullers. Front end up in the air, but it stays pretty steady right there, Dave. Oh, it is so steady. That means that the tires are getting maximum, maximum hold. He is really, really going to like that. There wasn't no demons in that run. On the leaderboard, pretty tightly contested for the light super stock class. A lot of good pullers remain. And one of the heavy hitters always in the class is Mark Ulmer. We will see him pull when we come back. The Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association is brought to you by Extreme Performance Tire Cutting, Be Supreme, by Extreme, Agency 212, Marketing, Communications, Public Relations, DP Racing, World Leader in Race Fuel Technology, and by Steel Rubber, Quality Crafted Rubber Parts and Weather Stripping. Welcome back to Rock Valley, Iowa, and the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Series. A great looking crowd on a gorgeous night. Here is Mark Ulmer. His nephew is in the lead in this class, and boy, he's got his sights set on him. He does for a fact, and with this new point system that the Outlaws has got this year, the chase to the pull off of the championship, this man has won four out of his last six runs. And what a beautiful pass. There wasn't no darting around and he was gunning. He was gunning hard. He just took the lead away from his nephew by nine feet, 357 and 11. Claude, you want to see Purdy? Here comes Purdy. And maybe it's no coincidence, Mark is a four-time outlaw mechanic of the year, so that's paid off. Uh, he knows how to wrench on him. Setting deep in the seat, just taking a pleasure ride. He is going to be one happy camper. Hi, Mark. Just another day at the office. Yeah, kind of, but it was an awful good one. Yeah, we came, we had a right that time, and it all worked great. So, man, thanks for everything. I don't think I've seen you that happy and that excited in a while. It, it, it's been, I've pulled for 40-some years already, and I have to say that was one of the nicest runs I've had. And at a perfect timing, because we've got a lot of friends here, a lot of people we know, and this is just a great place to pull. Rock Valley does an excellent job, and everybody that's affiliated with it, I love to thank them. Love these fans, and let's have fun tomorrow again. And that'll bring up Randy Dunclow. He drives Green Acres. Arlington, Nebraska, the Dunclow family, heavy duty in the sport of pulling. As you can tell, this man runs a dairy. It's a little hard to get off work and go pulling every once in a while, but hey, somebody else can milk the cows. We're going to have fun this weekend. Blowing smoke, spinning tires, going to the other end, 267 and 80. Long ways from where he wanted to be, but hey, he's still in one piece. That and this was really a pretty consistent run. Smooth and easy right off the line. You don't see much squat in the tires. Had good tire speed. Just didn't really get the forward momentum that he would like to have. But it's pretty simple, clean and sweet. This is Corey Schluter. He drives the Grand River Deer. Corey is out of Carrollton, Missouri. Now his dad right now sitting way down in this class, so it's up to Corey to bring home the money. There's a beautiful shot. Didn't like that bounce. He's not going to be happy with that bounce. Wrinkling the tires, getting everything he can out of the Grand River Deer. 300.9, not going to be the big numbers. And it looked like in a few seconds here, he is really having to work the brakes to stay on the track in the right place. Well, he's definitely fighting that bouncing right there. He's trying to get the tractor to settle down and go to the other end. And when it goes to bouncing like that, you know that's distance every time. 
Well, we'll go from green to orange. This is the Alice Express. Another one of the D21s. Proud to see them back on the track. Tyler Dorman doing a great job with the Alice Express. Not quite the cubic inches, some of the big boys, but this man has fun with the tractor and he's always right there with them. A lot of smoke underneath the hood. Could be a valve cover gasket such as that. I don't think we've got a major problem. 268 and 78. A little bit of different setup here on the front end, Dave. Little different. The skis that he's got underneath there, just that bar across that keeps them from breaking off. Now those skis between the front tires are a safety item. In case you break your front tire, keeps you from crashing the front end down. Alice Express. Final results, Mark Ulmer takes it away from his nephew, Alan, in a class of many colors. Case IH one and two, John Deere three and four. Some Pro Stock Semi action. This is Doug Ortwich. He drives Blue Pete. Pro Stock Semis is always a crowd pleasing class. The big 18,000 pounds. They actually weld the axles to the frame. There's no springs back there. They put all 18,000 pounds, they put the sled to the test. Doug O lifting the front end of the big machine. Doug Ortwich and the Blue Pete. Take a look at the replay right here. This beast just digs right into the track. It's horsepower time, but he is having to ride that clutch. Uh, you get 18,000 pounds, you don't sidestep the clutch. Big trucker sitting up there driving 40,000 pound sled to the other end. Doug climbs all the way from up here down to the ground, long way up, but it's a fun ride, it looks like. Yeah, it's a great ride. It's a fast seven seconds, but it's a good ride. Now, after being out here one run, if you had another hook, would you change anything? Uh, maybe get on it a little faster, but otherwise it felt pretty good. And that'll put a wrap on today's action from Rock Valley, Iowa. What great competition we had today. Now for Rick Carlson and Dave Bennett, Blogwood, so long, see you next time.